Right, welcome back listeners. Uh, apologies for last week, first of all, for having a delay to the post with the uh, podcast on YouTube. It was uh, a stupid mistake of mine, but I sorted it out. But unfortunately, it was a bit late in getting up the um, multi-bit question. So what I'm going to do is double that and uh, see if we can make it, we'll make it $40 and see if we can get the answer to the question later on in part four. But enough of that. Um, great racing down at Trentham Money Shot. You were down there. And uh, did you enjoy your day, bring the BGP day? Yeah, yeah. It was, to be fair, Neil, you'd have to say that track was probably one of the best tracks presented uh, yeah. all, all summer slash autumn. Mm. Pretty fair. Leaders were winning. Horses were coming wide and winning. So it was a pretty fair track all round. Pretty competitive racing. Uh, and, yeah, I thought a good day's racing, to be fair. Yeah. And... Often the way everyone thinks Trentham is the punter's graveyard, yet a lot of favourites saluted, including a couple, well, one in particular that you and I weren't convinced about, Scott Bass, but he proved us wrong, got his nose right down on the line at the exact right time. You would have sworn Paulonia had a won it, but uh, that's that's the way the photo finish goes. Uh, but no, top days racing, Savvy Cope winning the Oaks, Montoya star the cuddle, Ferrando the lightning, and... Scott Bass winning the Guineas, yeah, great yeah. day, I thought, yeah. and very enjoyable to be there. Yeah. Bit cold, bit cold wind, but yeah. still a reasonable crowd on course. You'd have to give it to um, John O'Benner and Holly Winyard to get a horse back and within a couple of weeks of missing out on the derby to freshen it up and, and to come off, a, it wasn't a fast tempo on that race, and to get up in the very last stride, was a terrific training effort, so and he's gone on with it too with a couple of more winners. So it's certainly up and coming. Good to see young trainers like them getting the good horses and getting the results, isn't it? Absolutely, Vespa uh, Humidor, of course. You could have had a John O'Bino triple with uh, yeah. Scott Bass, awesome Al, and his former charge Humidor all winning on Saturday. That would have been a nice little collect. But he's certainly a trainer on the rise. Yeah. Rumours have it he's moving to Matamata Matt today. Ah, oh, we can't blame them. That's where everyone seems to be going these days. But uh, I've got to mention Contessa Vanessa too, Don's horse. Uh, ran a terrific race for second on the Oaks. Uh, just came up against a really good horse, I think, Savvy Cope. Compared her sectionals and the tempo to the Daytona Red race. And uh, Savvy Cope was a really good performance. I'd like to see her in a race over 2,000 metres, even at weight for age, with a good tempo. I reckon she'd really would really see the best of her then. But, uh, She's going to Aussie and uh, must do well over there. Uh, chocolate fish, uh, I think we was fellow. It wasn't even a contest, mate. He mm. wiped the floor with me. Yeah, fella, he only got up for second, but Commanding Prince probably just had enough. I see he's going out for a spell and raced a bit keenly. Normally a sign of horse has gone off, and so going out for a spell, I think. Um, so is Fala. Fala is going for a spell, actually. Yeah. I think I read yesterday Scott Bass was going for a spell as well. I was thinking about the uh, Man or Two Classic next Saturday, but looks like it's going for a spell as well. Yeah. It'll be pretty hard to beat, you'd think, in those Hawks Bay Spring Group 1 races. Yeah. And we can't let it go, uh, the intro go by without mentioning the sports bets. Highlanders, you were really keen on them beating the Crusaders on Saturday night. And uh, it was a pretty good game, wasn't it? I saw most of the second half. Uh, nice and tight. Obviously, a bit of controversy with a bit of uh, with the try being disallowed. I guess at the end of the day, as long as the right decision is made, how it's arrived yeah. at is, is really all that matters. Uh, but yeah, I thought the Crusaders they'll rebound, but uh, they're hurting at the moment. Uh, two losses in a row, they won't like that. But the game this week, which we'll preview in part three, the Highlanders. Heading up to Wellington to take on the Hurricanes. And your Warriors, Neil. Your Warriors. You never lost the faith <laughs> much. <laughs> uh, you were up there. You obviously survived your day out at Mount Smart. Uh, the atmosphere pretty good, was it? It was a great atmosphere, actually. That's the reason I went. Love the game. There's a big crowd there. And it's the first time I've seen the Warriors win, I think, live at a game. They've always lost when I've been there. And um, the way they played, it's a definite sort of second up syndrome. In racing terms game, I think they'll improve a lot off that, and I can see them, we'll mention them later on, but I, I think they'll beat Canberra on, on Saturday night. Um, so it was a nice little multi for those who took it, and nothing else we can mention about last week. 
No, okay, we'll be back in part two with a preview of a couple of really interesting races at Matter Matter. Two meetings, thoroughbred matters in the country tomorrow. In most eyes, I imagine, we focus at Matter Matter for the racing tomorrow as feature race day. We'll look at race four and race six on that card. Neil, the first, the fourth race, the Pearl Series race. Pretty even sort of field. Uh, what have we got? A four dollar forty favourite with the bookies on her noir, looking to go back to back at Madame Anna, but I think she probably won't get quite as soft a lead as she did last time. No. So uh, maybe something coming over the top. Do you think could get the chocolates in the fourth? Yeah, I think so. It, uh, yeah, like you said, there's a good speed in that race with sound works and decision as well, showing me up. So there's a horse you put us into last year. Does it? Calundra, save the date. Um, got up on a wet track. Lance, was Leith on it then, that day? Leith, he did ride it that day. That's, That's right. right, we tipped it out on the podcast, didn't we? Yeah, yeah I think so, for the yeah. Monday. Was it Sunday? Oh, no, the Sunday race. It was a Sunday, yeah, yeah we right. tipped it out. That's right. Yeah. I remember that now. I paid, it drifted right late in the piece from about $3.50. paid about 6 bucks on the take. Yeah, that was a good day. Remember that one? It was a good day, actually. Yeah, yeah I like it too, save the date. Uh, pretty unlucky in its first run yeah. uh, back after a spell and and she looked stronger too I had a good look at her runs last campaign and she did like like the way she got into her work and her shoulder seemed stronger and rear end seemed stronger so Lance Noble's taking her time with her so I think um, yeah hopefully 650's going to hold up for us you and I think with that big race at Tiara in mind, 60 kgs, you couldn't back her with confidence. Rising Shot needs a firm track. Jar Jar Binks the same. But uh, no, I think save the day, 54 kgs. Yep. So it's currently a dead six, uh, matter, matter. Mm. Uh, the forecast isn't brilliant for tomorrow, is it? No, just a few few mils, but um, banking on a slow seven. But had a look at the meeting there last time. The rail was out seven metres on a slow track. I think it was back in early February. No leaders won, but horses racing handy and just off the pace. But midfield seemed to be to advantage, though. But um, interesting, no leaders won. So uh, and that, looking forward to that race. Hopefully by that race, should be uh, the boys get paid bank will be doubled and you'll be looking to double it again off um, something in that race. Maybe save their day. <laughs> Yeah, sure the would. Yeah. boys get paid syndicates going again. We didn't do too much damage to the pool. We, we did turn over a little bit of money, though, and gave everyone a bit of a thrill. Ups and downs of punting, I think. Uh, between our highest balance and lowest balance on the day was about a $33,000 swing, me or so. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was fun and games, that's for sure. But uh, the feature race, the Windsor Park Stud Japan New Zealand International Trophy, Won the Easter off a seven day backup, so not a major problem. How's this for a stat though? Would you rather have uh, a seven from 13 stat going for you or a one from six stat going for you? Well, seven from 13, wouldn't you? You would, wouldn't you? Because that seven from 13 right handed for seventh up and one from six left, which was his win last week against the weaker field. But looked to be doing okay, but. That is a query for me, and 57 kgs against some pretty good horses here. I thought five dollars was a bit short, so um, I like a horse called Travi, my friend. Um, the ratings it was a really good run at Hastings, ran third to Devise, and um, the other mare, a uh, consensus, and that's pretty good form. And I spoke to Rachel Frost, and she's she's confident he's come on well since then. She likes spacing his races, and a wet track isn't going to put him off drawn wide and uh, with a good run if the fence is off especially if he sort of sits six or seven three wide cover that could be the place to be on Saturday I thought 12 and 380 was a good each way chance and a, and a tough race but what are you going for? Well that sounds pretty good actually I quite like your thinking there 
I I had the old floozy on top. Uh, it was a good win in the race at uh, Ellerslie on crack a million night. Had a chance to freshen up. I know probably be getting using this as a pipe opener for the breeder stakes in two weeks' time, but yeah. I thought she was pretty classy and gets in pretty well at the weights too with the set weights and penalties format. So she'd be hard to beat again drawn wide, which could be the place to be at this time of mm. the day, especially with that other stat of leaders not winning. Uh, our King Sway for an absolute blowout. 35s and 8s. If the rains came, yeah. you wouldn't ride off our King Sway. Uh, you look at his record on a slow track, 13 starts for three wins, four placings. Yeah. He's won a, won a Taranaki Cup on a slow track. So he's got he's got the class there. Sure has. And just coming back in distance, they might be the only question mark coming back from the 2200 back to the 1600. Yeah. yeah. Then again, like a horse like Rangapo, he comes back from 2,000 back to a mile, and he's got that natural speed, hasn't he? I like a horse that, is, that does that, that has the ability over a mile, and comes back from 2,000. But the a dead to slow track may not suit as much as, um, say, a horse like Trevor, my friend, but I think Rangapo's got to be in this as well. You've got to have the old floozy, but like you say, with that probably one in mind two weeks later, all these mares are going to be looking for a tightener. So... Um, yeah, tricky race. Maybe one that uh, could be a blowout for the quaddy with a 25k bonus. What about over the Tasman, Neil? Some racing actions really starting to heat up over there. Rose Hill on Saturday again. The major talking point leading into the meeting will be the weather and what that uh, delivers in terms of track conditions. But the Rose Hill Guineas, the Golden Slipper. Yeah. Some old slug called Winks going around. That should be should be a good old day. Yeah, and uh, no, she should win, especially with that wet track or heavy eight now. Is at Friday noon, I heard. They've been uh, seven mils overnight. So remember last year in the slipper, that uh, track was a heavy track. Some struggle to get through, and I think it will be the same case in the guineas in the slipper again. But remember a horse called the Lord Mayor in the Derby coming home. Strongly out wide, running the fastest, I think, last 200 metres of the race. And um, at 23 and 650, I thought he was a good each way chance, being out of a Lord Ballina mare. And I think you remember the, the Dan, don't you, Soph? Soph, yeah. Yeah, yeah with well, a daughter named Soph, uh, I remember that one for sure. Uh, she won quite a few races on wet tracks, loved the mud. So if that family. Um, uh, trait has passed on to the Lord Mayor and you'd say it has based on he won a trial very nicely on a wet track and uh, his first few starts were on slow tracks so hey he could be the blowout for sure at $23 probably drawn in the right part of the track too yeah. uh, drawn 12 but yeah lots of Kiwi representation in that race so it'll be a good race to, to see for sure but the slipper that's the one I guess everyone's Looking forward to the most three point five million yeah. Australian dollars. Yeah, a lot of money. Mm. And there's one, two, three unbeaten horses. Uh, and many with only one defeat in their career, so it's gonna be a pretty good race. Two favourites drawn next to one another, written by and sunlight. But mm. they Good to see him win uh, with that jockey on board, Jason Collett. He's riding well over there too, and just the type of rider who'd give it every chance. I, I sort of liked Sandbar a wee bit, and I did like um, Sunlight. That one last week wasn't as impressive as I, as I would like to see. Uh, written by, has got to be a chance, but I'll go Sandbar. I liked his run last week, and uh, 14 and 3, 14 and 4, I'll um, probably back that each way just uh, for an interest. But, um, Chocolate fish bed. Last week, I managed to get one. Back off yeah. yeah. Now, how about in the Matter Matter race, race six? I'll go. Race six. Oh, uh, no, man. If you give me the old fleecy, I'll take you on. 
The Trevi, it's yeah. Trevi, my friend. Yeah, fair enough. I'm happy to go with that. I'd like you think you know I'm Trevi, so uh, I might be just donating again <laughs> to you, Neil, but that's okay. It'll be great to accept it anyway. Yeah. Uh, right. No, good day of racing tomorrow. Looking forward to it. And uh, I'll be going to the races, Madam Madam, tomorrow. Haven't been there what, for, for a year or so. I went there last year for a midweek meeting, and it was really good. So looking forward to going back. Um, right, we're back with part three in a moment with our sports preview. Okay, money shot, no pressure. Last week we made some money off the big game down at Dunedin. What are you going for this Saturday, this weekend? Well, I will stick to the big game, 75, Hurricanes host Islanders at Westpac Stadium. Yes. Already the Hurricanes have been backed in from an opening price of around $1.57, $1.60 into the current head-to-head price of $1.42. So all the money's coming for the Hurricanes, much like it did two weeks ago. And I think that money will be well placed. They will be beating the Highlanders on Saturday night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, their forward pack really stepped up against the Crusaders. And I was quite impressed by their forwards in that game. And I think TJ Perinara's 100th game, the boys will be lifted for that. Yeah. Just too much class across the field playing at home. Might be a bit windy and rainy. Certainly the Hurricanes can handle those conditions. The Highlanders used to playing under the roof. Yeah. Might not be quite so adept. I just like the way the Hurricanes are playing at the moment, and I think they'll be beating the Highlanders and covering the five-and-a-half-point start. Option 2158, number three, Hurricanes minus five-and-a-half at dollar eighty-seven. That's the money shot's best bet of the weekend. Yeah. No, they are playing really well, though. Good to watch, too, aren't they? Exciting team. Can attack from anywhere. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll stick with my worries bet, and the worries bet this weekend is going to be the worries minus or plus one and a half at a dollar eighty-seven versus Canberra. Canberra seems to be in the habit of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory the last two games. And I tell you what, watching that game last week, you get a full picture obviously when you're there. The Titans with about twenty minutes to go, a lot of the forwards are walking around, hands on hips, and the Warriors were running back and getting in line and. So that fitness coach has really made a difference, and I think uh, third up, they'll be peaking at the right time after that second up. Even though it was a good win last week, second up wasn't as good as the first game. And I think at the eighty seven, a nice little one and a half point buffer would be a, a good bet. So uh, looking forward to those two games. Five o'clock start and a seven thirty start again. Right, uh, back with part four in a moment with um, quite a few little things. Part four now. We wrap up the show. Give it a few. Uh, form analysis tips, touch on a few topics of interest in the industry and give you the chance to win $40 this week. Neil, your form analysis tip this week, why it can be better to wait till closer to the start time to back your horse? Yeah, it's always a tricky one, but you see the odds up of, say, $6, and you think, oh, that's pretty good value, but there might be a bit of rain forecast or, you know, the track is, can be by sometimes or... There might be a couple of other horses that could be backed in from strong stables. So you've got to weigh up whether you miss out on taking the early odds and waiting and seeing how the market plays out and the track plays out. Nine times out of ten, I'll wait. Unless it's really good odds, I'll take some early and um, be prepared to take the loss if it's, if it's no chance later on. But I think it's, it's really good, isn't it, to sort of watch the markets, watch the track, how the track's playing, get the information from the trainers and jockeys. And you can weigh up things much better, can't you? Close to that race time. Well, log- logic says that if you back horses at 8.30 in the morning or 10 minutes before the off, the majority of the time the odds will be better 10 minutes before the off because the percentage at opening is 1.28, 30 and by the time they close it, it's about 1.18. So uh, you should expect better odds closer to the time. Now, of course, there's times when horses get backed in and, and you don't get the early, early worm, so to speak, but <clears throat> logically, over the longer period, the odds should be better uh, closer to the jump. And often you're thinking to yourself, hmm, shall I take that price? There's a horse running at Titeco on Wednesday. I think you had his first pick, uh, a horse called Larka Steel. It had been the 380 the whole day. And had moved off that, but 10 minutes before the race, you could look on Betfair and see it was trading at around that $5 plus mark. So you thought, it probably drift based on that because all the uh, Aussie bookmakers use Betfair in a lot of ways to, to frame their prices. So if they're all offering $5 and New Zealand PMB is only 380 effectively they'll have to extend their price to to try and get some money on it and that's exactly what happened drifted to five dollars like a steel and one so uh, sometimes you have to make a decision when to
Yep, no, definitely. No, good advice that. Really good advice. And the same meeting that just amaze it was a typical example of not knowing if the horse was going to sweat up badly again. He went out looking terrific. Really well prepared by David Green. was a good bet and uh, came in on the market. So he still got $4, $4.50. So it was worth losing that dollar just to see if he was okay. If he was sweating up badly, you wouldn't have backed him. So it was a good example of a type of horse you could wait and see and, and back later on. Um, right, anything else? You can, you can spend a whole hour on that, couldn't you? Quite easy, just talking about things that can happen before the racetrack bias and jockey jockey changes even, that sort of stuff come into it. Late scratchings, markets changing. But, uh, uh, back to my old bugbear jump outs. Um, on March the 14th, Levin had the jump outs and 130 horses went round. That's like one and a half race meetings that went round that punters couldn't see. And two horses that raced at Waipukarau yesterday, both won, Portland Jimmy and Deaton Torre. Granted, they had trolled earlier on, but you wanted to see their most re recent runs at a jump out. And punters who found out afterwards about that would just be peed off. So I just can't see why they can't employ an unemployed person round the Levin somewhere, pay them five dollars per race. There were twenty three heats. And Fifteen bucks. Is it just for a day's work? You can't let people work for five dollars an hour, Neil. No, five dollars a race. Well, five dollars a race. Oh, five dollars a race. Last eight okay. hour. <laughs> I'll pay more than that, crikey. Come back a few years. Uh, no, I thought one hundred and fifteen bucks for a day's work would be really handy for somebody. So tomorrow I'm going to prove it can be done no matter matter races. I'm going to take my iPhone along. I'll stand up in the stand. It's only the, the race from the turn to the finishing post you want to see. You don't want a commentary. And I'll post those on YouTube. Uh, just two or three races so you can see that it can be done. Uh, it won't be the greatest division, but it'll be something that people can see and be able to make up their mind um, and, and work out for them sweat themselves. My, my thinking is... NZTR just need to make it compulsory for clubs like Levin uh, to video them and post them on YouTube. It's not hard to do. Anyway, I've got that out of the system. Um, now tomorrow, how, how much cash is in the boot for uh, the, big, the Boys Get Paid Syndicate? Boys Get Paid Syndicate? Uh, I'm still just telling it up actually, but I think it'll be somewhere around what we had last week, 37500 give or take. Yeah. A lot of money. Uh, a, lot yeah, of as I say, we, a lot of pressure too. <laughs> uh, what pressure? <laughs> we, we started with 37500 last week, we got it up to forty nine. it dropped down to seventeen. we collected 33000 off unfazed, back up to fifty, and finished on thirty. I think there were three bets we had on Saturday that were all to win at least thirty thousand dollars each of them and they all ran second so uh there was close but no cigars but that's punting but uh people who obviously enjoyed it left their money in a few people have bought in uh as well so we'll go again and see what we can do be a good old day out at matter matter yeah. for sure if uh, anyone wants to come along i'm sure you'll work out where the room is up the top of the main stand there so come along and say good day. Neil will be there. I'll be there. A few others will be there having a good old day out. So if you get to Matter Matter tomorrow, make sure you come and say hello. And we'll look after you. And we'll see what happens, Neil. You never know. Yeah, and I'm maybe a trainer or two coming up to have a chat to the group. Oh, yeah, I'm sure people will be popping in. Yeah. The suggestion has been made to, uh, if we're still just, you know, about square or the like, just for the, for the sake you've done it, do you want to, could we put 50,000, 40,000 to win on Winks? Why not? <laughs> what time is that race? It must be close. When do you have to finish? Oh, it's well after, well after the last race, it, yeah. uh, matter, matter. But we'll still be hanging around then, uh, subject to, to funds. What time's Winks race? 
carry it. On a wet track. You'd think, yeah. So, yeah. You'd think so, eh? Yeah. Drawn six, not going to get trapped in the inside or in the bad part of the track or get unlucky. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think she'll Who knows? I think she'll pay more than a dollar ten. That's often the interesting thing. Imagine if you put fifty thousand a win on it on the tote, say forty minutes out, thirty minutes out, and the dividend's showing eighty, ninety cents, mm. puts everyone else off in those mm. last few minutes, suddenly Kim and Tari's paying say fourteen dollars the tote. Uh, in that last yeah. minute or two the 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 over correction and she could drift out to a dollar twenty, although it needs to be a dollar. Uh, of course, if it's a dollar nineteen, it's raw dividend. It only pays a dollar ten, which is a big rip off. But that's another story for another day. The TAB's rounding system is one of the most disgraceful rounding systems known to mankind. Is that right? Is it showing a dollar? So 19? the raw yeah. the raw dividend. So yeah. so the amount of money in the total pool. So the amount of money bet on Winks to win, say, divided by yeah. the amount of money in the total pool. Let's say the raw dividend is a dollar nineteen, one point one nine six. The dividend paid will be a dollar ten. Now you think how much money that is ripping punters off. It's huge. It's a lot of money in a big pool. Well, exactly. Yeah. So uh, oh, that's, that's yeah. anyway, yeah. that's one of my big bears the rounding system. Yeah. Oh, well, what everyone's waiting for is your multi question, and it's going to be a forty dollar uh, bet for the lucky person. What's it going to be? Okay, so the Grace tomorrow, the Windsor Park Stud, Japan New Zealand International Trophy. Watch the space won this race two years ago, and is looking to win it for the second time. But as yet hasn't done that, and we ask this question: the only one horse has won this race twice this century. You want it back to back? Uh, should we give a clue, Neil? Pretty. He was known as the People's Horse, and he was trained at Tiaraha. So, if you can remember who that horse was, that's one back to back Japan New Zealand International Trophies. Get your answers via text or email to Neil by nine o'clock tonight, and you could be the winner of a forty dollar multi this week. Yep. O two seven three five two six four zero two usual number. Uh, text me or email formpro at formpro.co.nz and um, my wife will draw out one lucky person. Get that bet on tomorrow morning. If you can let me know first thing tomorrow morning or even uh, Friday night, that would be good so I can get it on early. Um, right, the good luck with the syndicate tomorrow. It's, I know it's a big job and it's a lot of... You take pressure pretty well, I know that, but it is a big responsibility and I wish you all the best and you just got to make your own mind up, don't you, and, and put the bet on and cross your fingers and legs, don't you? So, good luck tomorrow. Anything else you want to add before we sign off? Uh, no, no, I think that's it. Uh, next week is Easter. Uh, I might be a scratch at you. I'm heading over to Melbourne for Easter, Neil. Going to watch the Hurricanes play over there. So, uh, a bit of a, a, a road trip, actually. And there was the AFL started last night. Knows it. No, the money shot. No, he, he loves his AS, AFL. There was ninety thousand people at the first game of the season. Just a regular home and away game. Ninety thousand people. Tell me that sport isn't popular over there. It's amazing how it's so isolated to that sport. It hasn't taken off anywhere in the world, has it? AFL. Not, not to that extent. I mean, there is a World Cup. I mean, they play it in Ireland. They play it in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing like the passion they have for it over there. They will get along to a couple of games at the MCG. I don't know if there'll be uh, 90,000 there, but there'll be good crowds and always a good atmosphere. So we might have to uh, be a scratching for heads up on Easter weekend, but I'm sure you can either find an able replacement or fly solo, Neil, and, yep. and, 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 and get a ratings bonanza with the solo effort. Yeah. Oh no, if we make enough up boys get paid and they get I might uh, do it from Rara or something and do for a holiday, so never know. And um the Form Pro ratings are doing really really well. The speed maps we provide those to the TAB now on the TAB app for Greyhound Racing. And um it's mentioned terrific winners of dogs have been mapped to lead. A lot of a lot of double figure dividends. So if you follow the dogs, uh watch out for the app. You've got to update your app to get the speed maps latest version but uh, good information that uh, 
should be used by a lot of most punters you think okay well everyone have a great day and um make plenty of money and back plenty of winners preview